Who's that? Who's that? What? Who's that? What? What? Andrew, Philip, it's me, Leander. Who? Okay. Take it easy. It's Leander. From Nave. <clears throat> Drop your knife. Drop your knife. Oh, no, no, I, I forgot I had this. There you go, sorry. Who are you? What is happening? You guys remember me, right? I, I was the one who showed you out when the council said you had to go. <sighs> Leander? Yes! Leander. Why didn't you just knock? I did, but I didn't want to shout. Why? Because no one can know I'm here. What's happened? The Decapolis is up in arms because of you. What are you talking about? We, we, we didn't even go to any cities in the Decapolis. People from there overheard you in Nave, like me, and not everyone took it as well as I did. Took what? You're preaching! The consequences of your mission were disastrous. Consequences? The Decapolis is mostly Hellenist, but it's also a melting pot. Jews, Romans, Seleucids, Arabians. Oh, it sounds messy. It is. It's already barely holding it together. Your preaching made it... The town is on fire. I mean, not really on fire. Some places. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We only preach the Jews. It doesn't matter who you were there for. A few Greeks overheard, some Jews kept sharing what you said. Before you know it, a few Greeks quit worshipping Olympian gods or stopped reading the auspices. That made people angry, so they turned on the Jews. The Jews closed ranks and sent the Hellenists and sympathizers out of their communities. Oh, man. You guys really turned the place upside down. Sorry? You said your teachings were interrupted. Incomplete. Well, not by choice. We were sent away. But what you did say spread to the ten cities of the Decapolis. The tensions we have in Nave boiled up everywhere. The whole area. The new wineskins bursting the old. People want to know more. They're hungry for the words of your rabbi Jesus. It, it was an isolated mission. We, we were sent out two by two for a specific time to strengthen and unify our people. Your mission can't be over. It's brother against brother out there. Is that what you meant for us? Of course not. Then come back and finish what you started. Jesus had sent his disciples out two by two to spread his message. Andrew and Philip traveled to a region called Decapolis in an area inhabited by many Greek-speaking Gentiles. While Andrew and Philip meant for their teaching to be heard only by Jews, others overheard them and this led to rioting and violence. Leander, a man who had witnessed all of this, came to the disciples and begged them to return to the area and heal. But Philip and Andrew knew what they had to do first consult their teacher. You dragging your feet? I'm not. Every time I look, you're a few cubits farther back than before. Yeah, well, I'm thinking and my thoughts are making my body heavy. Can you stop thinking and walk? After what we just saw? All the more reason to move. Don't make this difficult. You think the situation among the Gentiles isn't difficult? Of course it is. Walking doesn't have to be. Oh. Oh. Or it does. Oh, I hate these. Oh. Oh. You're bleeding. Oh, thank you. I know what blood looks like. Oh, wow. Just go without me. I'm slowing you down anyway. Are you suggesting you'll stay behind and die? Maybe. We're almost oh. home. Oh. Can you... Perfect. Just perfect. What? Blood, carnage. It's the fitting end to our trip to the Decapolis. No one was bleeding. Yes, not from their skin, Andrew, but the whole place was torn apart. Just like this foot. No, because of our teaching. You're the one who's supposed to be made for this. Yes, I thought I was. That's what's so... John caused controversy all the time. Yes, but among the Jews, Andrew, we caused a multinational crisis on the verge of erupting into violence. Maybe even war. We might have blood on our hands, 
People might die because of us. Yeah, one thing at a time. Yes, hold here. Blood on our hands. Uh, it's a little much. We failed in our mission. Messiah gave us his words, and we didn't deliver. And if that doesn't upset you, then maybe it should, Andrew. You'll need a walking stick. Oh, welcome back. At least someone's happy to see us. He's a different Philip right now. Well, for good reason. Wait, wait, what happened? What are these? Oh, I'm making packages of food for the homeless. Little James said it's a Purim tradition. Purim! <sighs> Completely forgotten. How are we talking about holidays right now? Well, <laughs> what do you mean? What happened at the Decapolis? Our teaching. We made a mess. We did not intentionally create a mess. We preached the words of our rabbi. And some people took issue. Where is the vinegar? Oh, it's on the bottom table to the right. I, I rearranged the bottles. The way you had them organized before was very inefficient. The capitalist is in full-scale meltdown, and you're over here rearranging cabinets. How would he know? Why do you need vinegar? To disinfect the wound. Why, so it doesn't spread through my mortal body and kill me? Actually, yes. Oh. Ladies, uh, you, you still haven't told me what you did to the Decapolis? Not what we did. It's what we said. T to smooth things over? Sometimes, people respond better to stories than to teaching. Oh, a parable. Oh, good. Wh which one? A the banquet. Ah, I love a banquet. In Decapolis, Andrew and Philip shared with their audience a parable which had been taught to them by Jesus. In the parable, a man is preparing a great banquet, but those he invites make excuses in order not to come. So the man tells his servant to find other guests. Go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. When the banquet was still not filled, the man told his servant, go to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. These words unsettled those in Decapolis. How could such an exclusive banquet be filled with just anybody? You said this to a mixed crowd? We, we did not know the extent to which the crowd was mixed. So go out and find some leftovers did not exactly play well. Well, it should have. God wants everyone to come to the party. The master said, I want my house filled. Everyone is invited. Okay. Okay, so tell me, tell me if I have this right. The Jews understood you to mean that Jesus was calling for Gentiles, and the Gentiles thought you were calling them second class. And then the conservatives who lived by Jeremiah would have heard you saying that the original guests who didn't want to go to the banquet would miss the party. And those, better versed in Isaiah, behold, I am doing a new thing, were probably emboldened, except that Gentiles were there. Yeah, that's about right. How did you know that? I am a businessman. It's my job to know people, and I've met all kinds. It was demoralizing. I, maybe you're over-identifying your role in it. Would people be brawling in the streets of the Decapolis, Judas, if we hadn't gone there and preached? Brawling? Boys, it is way too early for the war. We have to be smarter. Hag Purim Samer! not. Come on. Come on, it's a holiday, not Shiva. I think we may have created a crisis in the Decapolis. So talk to Jesus about it. I was just about to suggest that. What happened to your foot? We are going to go see Jesus first thing in the morning. And what was your strategy to clarify it? Well, we, uh, we told, um, we, we, we tried to, uh, to tell one of your parables. Parables? Good. That's what I would have done. Which parable? The, <clears throat> the banquet. You know, the one where the guests give excuses not to come, and so everyone else gets invited. You chose the banquet? People get upset by that one. Of course they do. Well, if it makes you feel any better, we first considered the wheat and the tares, but we thought better of it. I already told you. Some people wouldn't understand that parable. I'm not even sure I understand the wheat and the tares. <laughs> Give it time. The problem is that they did understand the parable and it caused fights in the street. Writing. 
between Jews and Gentiles. Hmm. Leander's told us it's getting worse every day. The prominent Hellenistic priest has changed his ways, which is good, but when he abdicated his duties as priest and leader, others tried to fill the void. And so projects are going undone, and people are just angry and blaming each other for everything. It led to stealing, fights in the streets. Many people are actually leaving their homes to escape the violence. That's the environment you suggest sending us into? What part of the parable caused this fight to break out? The people outside the city. The ones on the highways and the hedges. The last to be invited and the last to accept the invitation. That's what I suspected. Speaking of which, the highways and hedges, does that actually refer to Gentiles? <sighs> he who has ears to hear, let him hear. We leave in the morning. Everyone go home, gather your things. We take to the highways and the hedges before dawn. Boys, this is part of it. You try and carry heavy things. Sometimes one gets dropped, but we pick it up and keep going forward. Hmm? Andrew and Philip thought they were the cause of violence and destruction, that their words had been a failure. But Jesus understood that the truth often does not fall on welcome ears. Jesus and his disciples honored the wish of Leander and returned to Decapolis. What they found there was exactly what they had been told they would find. They found division and destruction and discovered the place that was desperate for healing. Now, what is your name? Fatia. She is Nabatean. I didn't ask her ethnicity. Fatia, help us all understand what exactly has happened in this region. Your students preach the Nave about a kingdom that entranced many from this region visiting the city, including the Augur of Abila, who stopped performing his ceremonial and civic duties upon returning to the capitalists. Work came to a standstill. Construction was halted. Merchants could not get permits, and wells went undug. So you're telling me that the region was paralyzed by the absence of one man? What Fatia did not say is that the merchants who could not get permits hijacked a caravan of exports from my Syrophoenician brothers. We had a deal in place that you reneged. <clears throat> What is your name? Eremis. I'm a bronze caster. You appear to be in good health and strength. You're well dressed in Athenian blue. It matches your eyes. Tell me, Eremis, what is your plight? I bought a plot of land in the north. I needed a reading of the auspices to determine the gods' favorability regarding construction of a new casting facility. Hmm. Sounds so simple. But because of what those Jews said... Do not I associate these people with our order. You stood by as reports of their teaching poisoned the mind. You don't know what we have and haven't done, Fatia. We strenuously disavow all of their teachings. We have been punished for crimes we did not commit. Andrew, Philip. Yes, Rabbi. sir. Did you direct your teaching to Jewish citizens? Yes. As you instructed. But the auger from Abila overheard and was moved. Hmm. Aramis. What would the augurs reading have told you? Whether they were good or bad omens. Doesn't that sound absurd? You would call us absurd? Jew? Your laws about food and purity are laughable. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Sit down, brothers. The last thing these people need is thunder. How can I build a business without knowing where the gods want me to build? Hmm? Nazarene, if you are any sort of self-respecting rabbi, you will not dignify that question with an answer. Your people's condescension is unending. Oh, and there's never been a note of condescension in your voice, Fatia? Let's stay on topic. Hmm? So here we have Eremis, paralyzed by fear that his business ambitions might not be sanctioned by the gods of his religion. How could this lead to violence? The ogre's flagrant rebellion undermined Greek authority. And yet, the Jewish community was targeted in a brutal wave of attacks. My people were hardest hit for not having paperwork with Rome. And you turned to crime! Out of desperation! That is why I brought Andrew and Philip back to clarify their message. They told the story about hospitality. 
but for some reason, Jews and Arabs came to blows over it. The people originally invited to the banquet in your story had perfectly legitimate reasons for not coming. Which is another way of saying some people think the old way of doing things is better. Look to the ancient roads where the good way is and walk in it. You know your prophets? Of course I do. What about Isaiah? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Do not pit prophets against each other, especially on this issue. The people on the highways and hedges, surely you're not referring to the Gentiles. You sound like you don't want us to come to the banquet. The meaning of the story is that God wants his house full. And everyone who believes in me is invited. Plain and simple. Heresy! You know, you sound just like the people at the beginning of the story who declined to come to the banquet. I wouldn't be caught dead at a banquet with you. I couldn't stand before God if I was. Now do you see? So you're telling me that prior to Andrew and Philip's visit, the Decapolis was a veritable paradise of peace and unity? At least groups kept to themselves. Stop. Our town of Abila has been on edge for decades. Ah, we always knew the Jews were fractious and divided, but quietly, inside their synagogue. At least we go to Jerusalem to make our sacrifices. Not like you Greeks who leave your offerings on public altars to rot and stink. Ever wonder why Zeus never seems to come down to eat of your offerings? Maybe it's because the wine is sour and spoiled. Maybe it's because there is no Zeus. The Augur's apprentice secretly removes the votive offerings under cover of a night when the stench is unbearable. So basically your religion is a sham. <laughs> Again, that contemptuous spirit. Are you proud to belong to this denigrating race? Aramis, please. Jesus. Your fame is well known. We've heard how you work wonders and change lives and preached a sermon on the Chorazin Plateau that some are saying may become the most significant speech the world has ever known. I wasn't doing it to become famous. Well, too bad, because you are. And specifically for succeeding at all you put your hand to. Looks like you arrived at your first failure. Jesus says, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. It is far easier to draw a line in the sand than it is to step across that line and build a castle together. Jesus is preparing a banquet, but this banquet will not be congested with those who bring hearts filled with hate. As Jesus preached, the crowd around him grew larger and larger, and he needed his disciples to carry his words forward. This man, Leander, asked, how can it be that I inspire and transform some people, but seem to threaten and repulse others? And so, as I said, I'd like to respond with a story. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much immediately soil. Immediately they sprang up, for there was no depth of soil. And immediately they sprang up, for there was no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. And since they had no root, they withered the way. The thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Who has ears to hear? Let him hear. Forget rejecting me as I am eating. You seeing this? Simon, this crowd. We are completely surrounded. There must be thousands. The book of 1 John says Whoever claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister, is still in the darkness. 
as Jesus preached to the crowd late into the evening. He found people surrounded by darkness, yet searching for light. So many cities are missing the need for repentance and righteousness. I have already preached and done miracles in multiple cities, as have my followers. In multiple cities. And yet they still fall short. So many of you are here listening to me, eager to be drawn closer to God, eager to find peace in your souls. And in doing so, you have more wisdom than most of the religious leaders who refuse to be humble. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. From the wise yes, Father, the for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. And I am revealing the Father to you now, Jew and Gentile. What is stirring in your hearts in the middle of such division and unrest is Father God being revealed to you. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Speaking of rest, we all need it now, including me. So wherever you want to lay your head, let's sleep, and I will continue in the morning. Shalom, shalom. The Gentiles, they're out of food. I don't think anyone expected the teaching to last all day. Well, no one has forced them to stay. Simon. They're hungry for his words. Yeah, and now they're hungry for food. It's not our problem. Can't they go back to their villages? They were driven out by violence. It's nighttime. They, they have to sleep in these fields. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get how bad things were when we first came. Whatever happened, it wouldn't change the facts of the situation. Well, I can see things are going just as well here as out there. What do you mean? Some of these people were driven from their home more than a week ago. They're hungry. Entire. Don't trouble Simon with your news. His mind is anywhere but here. Andrew, be gracious with your brother. As night turned into morning, the disciples were concerned for the growing crowd listening to Jesus' teaching. They began to worry about the people's hunger. Not their spiritual hunger, but their physical hunger. They argued over the best way to solve a very clear problem, one that would be impossible for them to solve alone. And he went to the first and said, son, Go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind, and he went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two sons did the will of the father? The first! Many of you are from cities such as Tyre and Sidon, cities that have rejected God's You... Attention. Where did you find that? At the bottom of my bag. <laughs> Forgot it was in there. It's a little stale, but it'll do. You've, you've been out here for days, and, and you just you just discovered it? I, I followed some men who told me we were coming to watch a fight. A fight? Everyone was just in such a hurry. Does anyone have any food? Is it, no. Food? Your name is Andrew, yes? Yes. I want to share what I have. 
Somnus can feed one family of the thousands. I just wanted to do what I could. The kingdom of heaven. Are you okay? It's like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. What do you mean by that? No, I don't. No. Let me say it no. another way. Instead of. We should. It's like a merchant in search of fine Why? pearl. Why? There's no way to feed these people. One pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Listen carefully, because this is accessible to all of you, regardless of race or creed. It's the last thing we need the to do. The kingdom okay, is so saying. valuable that once you have glimpsed it, it's worth parting with everything you have Dude, in order to gain it. We shouldn't burden him. Even though to others you might look like a fool, throwing away your life savings to buy what would look to others an unremarkable field. But you know of the hidden treasure. That makes it worth everything. Have you come closer to here better? No, there, there is an issue. My friends, if you'll excuse me, I must speak with my students a moment. Rabbi, mm. people are out of food. Some have been without food for days, others have traveled a great distance. So, give them something to eat. We're out of food. They're out of food. Is it time to send them home? Well, at this point, they're so hungry and tired that if we send them home, they're faint along the way. You knew they were hungry? Yes, Judas. I can see them while I'm talking. Hmm. <laughs> well, this is a tough one. Where can we buy some bread for all these people? Well, we only came with a little over 200 denarii. Rabbi, that's not even enough to get a little bit for everyone. I wouldn't even know how to calculate that. Matthew and I can calculate that. That's really easy. Maybe if we go into the cities, we can negotiate something on credit. Yes. Yes, that could work. Negotiate with whom? The closest city is Abila, and its entire population is here. It's nine miles away, and even if we raided every house in town, we'd have to find a way to bring it back here, and it would still only feed a fraction of the masses. Can you bring me anything? Surely there's some food from someone, even a small amount. Five loaves of bread and two fish. But what is this for so many? Barley loaves. Two fish and five barley loaves. Thank you for clarifying. This is humiliating. John. He will take care of it if he wants to. You look scared. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid that he'll choose them. John the Beloved said, if anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. You cannot love God without loving people. These two things are inseparable. Jesus says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God did not come to save a certain people, a certain tribe, or a certain nation. He came to save the world and everyone in it. Jesus doesn't just belong to you and the people you love. He came to save everyone. All who are willing to eat of his bread and partake of his spirit. His love is like a banquet in which all are invited. This is wonderful bread, Telemachus. I know it's not enough. Oh, it's enough for me. I can do a lot with this. Thank you. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Did they find some bread?
If they've got bread, be ready. We'll probably be first. Feed them. What has changed? Are we... Organize the people into groups of 50 and 100. Gather up 12 baskets to distribute the loaves and fish. Was I unclear? Ah, uh, no. This feels familiar. Maybe. Let's go. Does anyone have a basket? Please borrow a basket. Anyone? Or you? Please. Come on. It's important. Yes, over here. Feed them. Anyone? Yes. Anyone have a basket? Anyone? You. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man Anyone? took and sowed in his field. Anyone have a basket? It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it has grown, yeah, yeah. it is larger than all the okay, gardens. Got it becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and make their nests in its branches. Yeah, I've got one. Okay. Let's just keep them on. Okay. Break up the bread. Okay. How need do we have? There, you take some. There. Just need some. Give me some of that. Do you have enough? Just like that. Yeah, yeah. There. There. Anyone need some? It's better than the tail. That's the last of it. Yeah, that's the last of it. All right. Marcus, you can have your basket back. I've kept you here all this time giving you spiritual food. But you clearly need actual food now. So let's eat! music, that party, James, the brother of Jesus says, those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. As Christians, we are called to love, but we cannot love as Christ has loved us without reaching across divisions to build bridges. In John chapter number six, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Do you have bitterness in your heart? 
Are you holding on to hate? Are you clinging to resentment? Jesus came to bring us together. Every one of us is invited to his banquet, a banquet filled with incredible things, joy, peace, love, and you are invited. But the question is, will you accept his invitation? Because if you do, you will find exactly what you need to sustain you through whatever this life brings.